I asked some of you what W Gaming means, and unsurprisingly, some of the answers are related to Paper X. But what if I told you that this Singaporean team didn't invent this style of Valorant, but rather it's a reflection of a region's identity? W Gaming, in my opinion, is an approach to a game that relies on fast, explosive, and aggressive plays that are a stark contrast to the slow and methodical nature that you see used by the majority of past EMEA and America's teams. While some will gain map control by manipulating defense by showing fakes, presence, and utility to gain info, W Gaming takes it by force. It's what makes teams like PaperX and DRX so fun to watch in the past. However, after a poor performance in Shanghai, some are stating that PaperX should just get an IGL or just abandon this style of play altogether. That W Gaming doesn't work and can't win titles. So today I want to talk about how that train of thought could be very dangerous for a team and if W Gaming is really that bad. First off, a lot of orgs from EMEA and Americas don't enjoy playing against a good APAC team. We saw this recently with Fnatic drawing against Gen G, as well as Common Corp who got played like a fiddle because they weren't ready for Paper Rex's aggression. Even Evil Geniuses last year knew that they would prefer to go against an EMEA team rather than an APAC one. Goes to Potter from Zen at Strafe Esports. You'll next face either Team Liquid or ADG. What do you think of both teams and whom would you rather face? I think both teams are really good. EDG are on uh, definitely a bit of a honeymoon. KonKon looks insane. Um, I think for us, we'd rather play Team Liquid. There's just this unpredictable factor coming out from EDG and a lot of unknown quantities. Uh, whereas for Liquid, you can expect a certain play style. You can definitely expect a certain amount of map control coming out from a team like Liquid. So uh, th I think for sure for us, it would be Liquid over EDG, but kind of depends on the day. This is because if you're playing against a slow and methodical approach, you can kind of guess what the other person is planning to do or how they react, especially if you're good at vaulting and reading opponents like Evil Geniuses were. Going against individuals in DRX, PaperX, and even Gen G is a bit more annoying because sometimes they might just throw out the playbook and do stuff that you weren't expecting, or they might unveil a new set play that, that throws you for a loop and requires a coaching timeout that might not even work. And speaking of set plays, you can go all the way to Vision Strikers as the pioneer of suffocating set plays that can just dazzle a crowd. I want to point out in this clip that Vision Strikers are on the defense here and are forcing the attackers on the back foot. Something on paper that doesn't make sense unless you realize how well timed these executions were. Jet isn't just running it down but playing off of breach flashes to take up space. Smokes were used to further isolate matchups. Plus, this omen blind helps funnel any attackers into a specific spot. There's a sova dart as well to give more info to Jet as to where to aim. Again, this style of play is a great counter to the slow, methodical, and defaulting nature attackers do from time to time by taking up space and gaining info. It's hard to do this when the other team imposes their will and says, hey, we're going to challenge for this space by force and there's nothing you can do about it. It's either you get down and dirty with us or be prepared to be forgotten in history. In 2023, NRG who were seen as the successors to Optic struggled against this playstyle. They were a team known for the big brain methods for slowly taking control and working the map. Something that they did again during kickoff when Ethan was in charge. However, in 2023, they lost to PaperX and Masters Tokyo and couldn't do much against Billy Billy, who was a Chinese-based team. It's almost as if these playstyles clash against each other pretty well. Also, you can see Apex influence all over the new Chinese region, probably a result of the fact that Chinese and Apex teams scrim with each other. You can see the Pacific effect in some of EDG's unorthodox rounds in Masters Tokyo. Honestly, this was when EDG looked their best so far. This leads me to why asking teams to change their playstyle altogether isn't always a great idea. At the end of Champs 2023, EDG's performance was mixed. Some were unhappy that they got the same results as they did in Masters Tokyo, while others were still hopeful that they can get better with this approach to the game. However, you will hear talking points stating that their playstyle had a ceiling and that they reached it. That a dramatic change was needed if they want to actually win an event. What, well, the biggest thing that pisses me off watching Chinese Valorant actually is just a very natural a consequence of them not playing very many tournaments against the best teams in the world. They have no respect for being punished. They don't think about how good teams are going to roll them. 
they're, they're, they're doing stuff and making decisions where a good team is going to understand that they've made a mistake and abuse their bad positioning, bad angles, bad help, like whatever it is, whatever mistake they've made in the moment. Edward Gaming have gotten worse. They've just gotten worse. I'll say it right now. The fundamentals that was there uh, are just looser. The, uh, the team play is just not quite as there. And guess what? They haven't offset that with any sort of meta development. So FPX have overtaken them. They're like gecko attack side opping for some reason in like half their oh, rounds yeah. and playing really I'm weird blind. comps. I still think a lot of their ideas are just inherently trolls. And honestly, these comments were convincing and I bought into the Kool-Aid too and started saying the same thing as well. Fast forward now, EDG hasn't looked too good. Yes, their team play is better, and had moments of brilliance, but overall you can tell that they are struggling. This is because they're changing how they approach the game and they're going through growing pains in the process. You can tell that they're trying to be more like 2022 Optic and 2023 Fnatic. Maybe it's a necessary evil to lose now and learn from it before finding a breakthrough. Fnatic and Envy themselves went through a long period of not winning tournaments before becoming a top team. The same might happen with EDG or they could end up like Zeta Division. Remembered as a team that captivated hearts globally, but eventually ended up as just a footnote. We could see the same happen with Paper X if they succumb to all that noise. Noise that's saying it's time for a change and a dramatic one too. Some are saying that they need an IGL, while others are saying it's time to abandon W Gaming altogether. I don't think that's something that you do this close to champs. Changing a team's identity is a process you probably want to start in the offseason. Even then, it might not turn out well for you. It's kind of like how Valorant YouTube coaches say that trying to fill every agent or role hurts your progress since your confidence isn't as high with some agents as your main. Players who are comfortable in one system might not be in another. Comfort is huge for your mentality and confidence heading into a match. Changing the system isn't all that simple either. Again, Envy, Fnatic, and even Sentinels went through a lot of losses before everything clicked and found their approach to the game. Sometimes throwing out the baby with the bathwater is needed or just a simple change to address small mistakes might be better. Now, I don't think PaperX really needs an IGL because if you're able to make it to multiple top four finishes, then you're doing something right. The IGL by committee works when you have a certain play style with experienced players because these individuals have already seen it all and have a strong feeling for the game. For example, this gamble stack that Sentinels were able to pull off against Carmine Corp was not a John QT call, the IGL for Sen. I don't know what gives this read away, it just seems to be a gamble. Zelsis forwards. Tens is set up for a paranoia. Are they going to try to clear this? Yes, they're going to be trying to fight this one. Paranoia, forwards, haunt, haunt, broken, tags it in the smoke, forwards, Satchel's backwards, a boundless second, he let the rocket loose, and Sentinel's no way! From the jaws of defeat, they're trying to take it back. Magnum has taken so much damage in the mix of things. Three HP, Spike, retrieved, back and away, not quite. It's dropped down, and Sentinels, out of nowhere. You're joking. That's on the win. Uh, I got a question for John Cutie. Of course, you know, looking at the second map, specifically at the very end of there, there was a time in which Casey was on the verge of extending that map to overtime with... Um, that narrate 1v3 clutch, but then you guys turn it around with that thrifty win with everybody on C and just um, taking everybody down and winning the series as a result. I want to know from your perspective, what was the comms like in, in just trying to make that play together? You know, did you kind of anticipate that Casey was going to to, to go hard C and also um, everyone else within the team can chime in if they want? Uh, we just made the call. Uh, shout out to Zach. He made the call to Rocket. I think Jordan made the call for uh, Sassy to I from Waterfall. So it was more of a team uh, team effort on the call. Everyone did their part. And uh, I really can't uh, give the credit for me on that one. Everyone did their part, and that's how it goes on the stream. You know what credit we can give to, though? Yep. The Sentinels Classic okay. by the Sentinels by Bundle. Classic. Please buy Zekin's intuition was a result of numerous tournaments and teams he played on. Don't get me wrong. Depending on the team's approach to a game, then a de facto IGL is needed, but a lack of one isn't the reason why PaperX is struggling right now. If you compare their accolades when they had an IGL in Benkai versus when they didn't, I don't think there's that big of a difference to say an IGL would solve all of PaperX's problems. In 2023, you can argue that it was their most impressive year when they went with IGL by committee. And the only reason why they did this was because they were at risk of not only missing Masters Tokyo, but playoffs of APAC altogether. 
Once Benkai was replaced with Ilya, aka something, they started to blaze the competition. First place in APAC, third in Masters Tokyo, second in Champs 2023. The only team that you could say had a better year was Fnatic, who I will admit did play the opposite of W Gaming. However, they're not so dominant this year with that approach. Maybe the meta kind of dictates which style is better. If anything, in 2024, I think you will have to say that W Gaming is doing better than the majority of EMEA. Paper Rex's main weakness is discipline. I've seen too many times where they would just peek one by one into an enemy's crosshair or just give up man advantage altogether. You don't need an IGL to tell you not to constantly throw 1v2s. Also, this isn't a product of their intended system, but rather the org's culture. We've seen other teams that aren't really Paper Rex still mess up situations that are almost impossible to lose because of bad positioning or comms. For example, in the NRG versus C9 game, Som and Ethan found themselves in a 2v1 position. In the past, NRG under Finesse have been shown to be the opposite of W Gaming, by the way. Basically slow and smart plays to find them. But for whatever reason, Ethan jumps out of Ness in a position where he cannot be traded. It might have made more sense for him to exit the other side, so that trade scenario is more possible. And sometimes you might still lose even if you make the right play because someone just has an incredible spray transfer. But this wasn't one of those scenarios. It was just bad team play. But of course, people are only human and mistakes will happen. It's just that we see this a lot more in key defining moments for Paper X. Again, I don't think this is a result of their style of play, but more of the team's culture. Sometimes we seem like we're trolling, right? But we're not really. I mean, if he's not drawing, then it's not very bright. <laughs> if you watch past logs slash docs on their channel, you will see how upset Alex was when they had Benkai on the team, as well as how upset he was when they replaced him with Ilya. It's a problem that's followed them for a while, and honestly, it's hard to fix since there's so many times where dry peaking an angle has worked out for them. I mentioned this in the past that Paper X's strength can be a, both a blessing and a curse. They have flexible players who feel like they can play multiple roles at a high level. And they've backed that up in the past. They've actually beaten Evil Geniuses in Champs 2023. And in their rematch, they changed their team comp to win on a map that they originally lost on. Brilliant, right? Well, they did the same thing for Bind. And they kind of didn't need to. Again, this is hindsight Harry. I'm sure if they won on Bind, then of course I wouldn't be mentioning this. But they didn't. They look worse in the Grand Finals with this comp despite beating Evil Geniuses a few days earlier on the same map. At times, Paper X's worst enemy isn't their style of play, but themselves. Regardless, as you can see, W Gaming, aka this highly aggressive play style, isn't the main problem for Paper X. If it was, then these teams wouldn't be coming close to the grand prize at all. DRX has had moments where they looked like the best team in the world, but fell short to other excellent groups of players. Some will say they didn't reach the grand prize due to their inability to make in-game adjustments, mid-rounding basically. Paper X failed to reach the grand prize merely because of discipline in my opinion. As a fan of this team, there have been so many times where they just peak one by one and lose fights, or they didn't play smart in a 2v1 situation. The best advocate for W Gaming, in my opinion, is Gen G, who came in second during Masters Madrid and won Masters Shanghai. On paper, they might not seem like an aggressive team, but do not be fooled. They can go fast on both the defensive and offensive end to control space, and they do it quite often, especially when they're going against other APAC teams. Genji is like the perfect blend of DRX and Paper X, where they have taken the best aspects of those Pacific Giants without succumbing to their weaknesses. At the end of the day, a winning team needs to be flexible and be able to play both fast and slow. Something that the likes of Sentinels, Genji, and even Evil Geniuses last year have shown to do at a high level constantly. If you're a team that's only amazing at playing slow and just okay or mid at playing fast, then you might end up like 2023 NRG or current G2. If you're a team that excels at playing fast but struggles with discipline or weak with mid round calling, then you might end up like DRX or Paper X. In my opinion, it's not that one style is better than the other, but rather how the individuals on a team understands them and knows how to exploit the weaknesses of the others while minimizing the drawbacks of their own flaws. But I want to know what you're thinking. Is there clearly a playstyle that's better than the others? Or does this change because the meta is always changing? Let me know down below. But till then, stay safe and I'll be yapping in the next one.